nice to be with you again today. You are here for another in the series of the How to Use the Caregiver's Notebook series. And the Caregiver's Notebook is a book that just came out in November of 2014. Um, it is, as the subtitle says, an organizational tool to, and support to help you care for others. Caring for others, being a caregiver, is a, is a very um, wonderful job and it's an important job, probably the most important job we will ever do, but it can also be a very difficult job and it's a very complex job. This notebook was put together to help make it a little less complex and a little less stressful because as we all know, if we know where to find the information we need to do a better job of caregiving, it just makes it easier to do it. So. Today we are talking about the section called Legal Documents. This is about, I'm not sure, maybe the seventh or eighth in the series. And if you go to the bottom of the page, you should be able to find some links if you want to go back and watch ever, other episodes in this series. Or you can just go up to the search box in the top right hand of this page and you can um, type, type in the Caregiver's Notebook vlog series and you should be able, it should bring up all of the other ones and then you can go back and watch them too. But as I said, today we are dealing with the one on legal documents. Um, this one, what you need to know right away is that every state handles most of those legal documents a little differently. So it's going to be very important for you to check with someone in your state. You might want to talk to a lawyer or at least you want to go and you should be able to do a Google search on the internet and type in your name state and then any of the documents that you're talking about and you should get to a government site that allows you to download the documents you need. Many states, I live in Iowa right now and we have documents that are downloadable but that's not the case in every state. We're thinking of moving to Wisconsin in a few years and so I checked Wisconsin and they do everything where you end up getting a bracelet that you wear with all of the information on it and, and everything is filled out online. So it's a little bit different for each state. You want to check and make sure what your state's uh, program is, how they've set everything up, but you should be able to find everything you need online if you look hard enough. Now if you want to turn in your notebook, if you've got one, there is a tab that says legal documents. You can flip there and as I've mentioned in previous episodes, you can go to the bottom of the page and you'll find links if you don't have a notebook yet. You'll find links to different online sites where you can order it. You can also order this at your bookstore if you'd like to support your local bookstore. If they don't have it in stock, they can certainly order it for you. Now in the legal documents section, it's not very long, but it is very important. And if you turn in it, you'll find that there are boxes for a variety of different legal documents. I'm just going to read through theirs. So there's a box where you record information about your last will and testament, a box for information about your living will, another one for medical power of attorney, there's a box for, i get my page turned, do not resuscitate orders, do not intubate orders, durable power of attorney, there's a box for special needs trusts, and then a couple extra boxes if there's any other kind of legal document you want to keep track of there. Um, you can just make uh, customize those boxes for your needs. Now, this notebook is not a place for you to keep all of those documents. You probably don't want your loved one's will there, but the box allows you to tell who the designated decision maker is concerning the will, the address of that person, the contact information, phone numbers for that person, and then the location of the document, whether it's in your safe, your fireproof safe at home, or whether it's in a lockbox at the bank, or at your lawyer's office, you can record that information. The same is true for the other things, such as living will, medical power of attorney, durable power of attorney, and so on. Now, some of those things, you may want to have copies with the notebook, just in case there would be a medical emergency, your loved one would end up in the hospital. You might want some of those documents at hand. And so you can make copies of those and at the very end of the notebook 
there are a couple pocket pages where you can fold those and keep those there. And that way if you end up in the hospital, especially if you're not in your normal hospital where everything is already on their electronic medical chart, you can have those scanned and included in your loved one's records while they're in the hospital. Because you may not want may you, you may want some of those things like the living will and the do not resuscitate kinds of orders. Those you do need there. You may also want to just keep a uh, tuck a copy of the medical power of attorney and durable power of attorney in there, especially if you as the caregiver are, are the one who, who has been designated for those so that you can easily show people that you are the one may, able to make those decisions. And another thing to remember is that the durable power of attorney and the medical power of attorney and of course a will need to be notarized. So you will need to go and have those notarized um, to make them official. And the easiest place to do that is just to go to wherever you do your banking. The bank, Many of the bankers are, are notaries and can take care of that for you, and they do it for no charge. So I hope that gets you started on filling out the gathering and then completing, gathering legal documents, then completing this information about where they're located, and then keeping them in those locations. Again, it's also important maybe every year or two to double check and make sure all those things are current. See if you need to update anything. And you might want to just go back to your calendar, flip back to the calendar, and maybe put something like every January 15th. Check and make sure all of that is current and see if anything needs to be updated. That's it for this section of the notebook. I hope you found it helpful, and I hope you don't feel overwhelmed. Just go one document at a time and only fill out the ones that are necessary. Every one of them may not be necessary for your situation, but it will feel so good when you are done with that. I, I did one workshop where we went through a lot of this information with caregivers, and one of them said, you know, it seems like a lot of work at first, but when you have it all written down and you have it all recorded, it's like you just release the worry, and it's a burden that comes off your shoulders. And I hope that's the feeling that you're getting as you work your way through this notebook and get things organized for the loved one you're caring for. Thank you for all that you are doing for the people you are caring for. You are mine.